Let's learn a little bit about debugging. Debugging is a way of finding bugs or identifying problems in the code. It helps us find the source where the problem might be and then find a way to fix it. There are different ways to debug code and different tools exist to make debugging easier. For example, in JavaScript, we might use console.log in multiple places to see what the output is and then debug the code that way. In PHP, we might use something like var dump or echo statements to figure out what the issue is and locate it. Now, as the code gets more complicated involving many steps, sometimes having var dumps, echo statements, or console logs are not enough. This is where we would use something like a step debugger or a control flow debugger tool that kind of runs through the code line by line or step by step, executing all the necessary functions and methods along the way, allowing us to inspect the state like variables, values, and the data structures at each step. We will be covering the basics of a very popular PHP extension called xdebug, which has a bunch of features including the step debugging. We'll set up the xdebug using Docker, but you could set it up other ways if you're not using Docker. You can refer to their documentation or simply Google the setup instructions for your specific environment. Xdebug website even has a handy wizard for Windows users where you paste in the full output of PHP info function and it gives you the appropriate file to download. We're going to be installing the Xdebug via Docker, so let's open the Docker file and add the Xdebug extension and enable it using the docker php ext enable command. Now before we rebuild the containers, I want to add a simple var dump to our invoice controller to var dump list of invoices. Let's open the browser and visit the invoices page. And sure enough, we get this var dump. Let's also add some exception on the home controller and open the page in another tab. And sure enough, we get the exception. Now pay attention to the way the var dump is displayed here and the way exception is displayed here. It's important because it will change once the xdebug is installed. Let's now rebuild our containers by running docker compose up d build. Once this is finished installing, we can open the browser and refresh the page. As you can see, our var dump now looks much better. Let's refresh the home page, and sure enough, our exceptions also got a new look and it looks much better. We can further verify that xdebug is installed by executing the xdebug info function, which is similar to PHP info. Let's refresh the page, and sure enough, we can confirm that the xdebug is installed and enabled. As you can see, the step debugger and other features are not enabled here, only the development helpers are enabled. Xdebug has modes which enable different things. The default mode is the develop mode, which basically overrides the looks of var dump and errors and also provides some additional information and helpers. Xdebug can be customized via configuration settings. We can either add the config settings to the PHP INI file directly or we can create a separate INI file and copy it within the Docker. I have already created a basic xdebug ini config file behind the scenes within the docker directory. The first line here enables the xdebug. Depending on your environment, you may or may not need this because it might already be enabled by something else. If you get errors like xdebug already enabled, then you can remove or comment this line out and try again. So we're going to comment this line out because it will be enabled via docker command. On the second line, this is where we set and enable the modes. As you can see, we are enabling the develop and debug mode. The debug mode is the step debugging mode. Next line here turns on the xdebug for every request. And finally, the, these two lines are responsible for a connection with the IDE like PHP Storm. This basically allows Docker to connect with the host machine. Now let's go back to the Docker file and let's copy our INI file to the correct PHP INI directory. There is one more thing you might need to do depending on your environment. For example, if you're on Linux, you might need to define the Docker internal host. So if we open our Docker Compose, if you get any kind of errors, try defining Docker internal host via extra hosts option. So you'll do something like extra hosts, host Docker internal, and this will equal to host gateway. And I forgot to add dash in here, and this should be good enough. In our case, we don't need it because I'm on Windows, so we'll get rid of that. 
One last thing that I did behind the scenes is that I added the server name to the nginx config file because that's needed for xdebug to work properly with the IDEs like phpstorm to be able to recognize the incoming debug connections. So that being said, let's now rebuild our containers and then refresh the page to confirm that everything is working. And as you can see, after refreshing the page, the step debugger is now enabled. All right, so now we should be able to start debugging. Note that I'm using PHPStorm, so the steps might be different for other editors. I would recommend searching tutorials specific to your editor if you encounter any issues following this one. So let's open the PHPStorm settings and within the PHP section, we'll click on debug. Now in here, we don't really need to make any changes to the default settings other than setting this break at first line PHP scripts to enabled. This basically allows the debugger to start debugging at the first line whenever the request comes in. We can then start listening to the actual debug connections by clicking the start listening button right here. Something I want you to note is that xdebug runs by default on port 9003 since xdebug 3. However, xdebug 2 was running on port 9000 by default. That was conflicting with the PHP FPM's port and therefore they switched it to port 9003. That's why you see both ports being included here. If you're running on a default port, then you should be fine. However, if you're running on a custom port and you changed your configuration file to set the custom port for your xdebug, then you need to make sure to include that port in here. So let's click on apply. And just to let you know, if you click on run, you can stop and start listening for the debug connections from here. And you can also check and uncheck that setting to break at first line. So let's remove the xdebug and var dump statements and let's refresh the page. As you can see, the page is not loading. However, if we open the PHP storm, we see that the debug connection is being detected. As you might remember, all of our requests go through public index.php and that's what we see right here. Once we click on accept, we see that it opens the public index.php and it starts debugging at the first line. We can then switch into the debugger tab here and we can inspect all the variables and values that are available at that step. We can then step into and step over the individual steps, which allows us to step debug our code following it line by line as it's being executed. So let's step over here. And as you can see, once we stepped over the storage path, now it's set to the proper value. We can then step over all the way. We have the container variable available. We can open that up to see what it is. Let's continue stepping over. And once we get to the app class, we want to step into because we want to get to the invoice controller to see what's going on. Maybe there is some kind of issue within our controller method. So we can step into here. That's basically indicating that your mappings are not set correctly. We can fix that by clicking set up path mappings here. And we see that the public directory is mapped correctly, but everything else are not mapped. So what we need to do is that we can map the project root to var www. We can then delete this and click OK, and that should be good enough. Let's continue stepping over and we got to the app.php. We can continue stepping over all the way until the resolve method, which resolves the routes. So let's continue and we got to the resolve. We can step into the resolve. We see that at this point, the request method is set to get and request the URI is set to slash invoices. And we can see these right here as well. Let's continue to step over and we will step into this function call because this is what executes the method on the controller. So let's step into that and we're within invoice controller. Now we can debug our invoice controller to see what's going on. Right now we have no bug, so we're just going to step over it. And once we are at the end, it's simply going to render the page. So if we open the browser, we see that the page has been loaded. Now, this is super helpful because if there is a bug in the application that you're trying to find, you can go through the flow from the browser and step through each step till you find where the issue is or where it breaks. Then you can inspect the variables at that point and hopefully find the root cause of the problem. Now, you might not want to go through all of this step debugging just to get to invoice controller. Maybe you only want to debug this part and you know that everything else before that works. You know that something here breaks. 
we can avoid going through all the steps up until this point by setting something called breakpoints. We can set the breakpoint right here and it will start debugging from this point on. For this to work, we need to disable that break at first line in PHP script setting. So we'll turn that off. Let's go back to the page, refresh the page. And if we go back to the PHP storm, we see that it started debugging from this point. Then we can simply step over and step into from that point on and inspect our variables and check it out if there is anything wrong and finally figure out where the bug is. This way we start the debugging process from where it really matters without going through the entire flow. Note that there are some browser extensions available to make debugging easier. You could check them out and see what works for you. If you want to learn more about Xdebug, I recommend checking out the documentation and Derek's YouTube channel who is the creator of Xdebug. He has a bunch of useful Xdebug videos so definitely check it out if you want more in-depth Xdebug stuff. The links to all the resources as always are going to be in the description. So this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my content please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. As always I'll see you in the next one.